Good day, students. We are here once again to study physics. And uh, the topic of today is capacitors and capacitance. Specific objective. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to define capacitor and capacitance and state its unit. Then state the factors which affect the capacitance of the capacitor. Then define the dielectric material and dielectric strength. Then solve equations or solve questions on parallel and series arrangements of capacitors. Capacitors and capacitance. He said the capacitor is a device used for storing electric charge. It is also used to store electrical energy. So, the capacitor consists of two or more parallel plate conductors carrying equal but opposite charges separated by a distance by insulating material or either a vacuum or air. So, you see that in a capacitor we have the two or more parallel plates. And those plates are separated by a distance. And that distance is either filled with insulating material or it is vacuum or it is filled with a A. So we said the insulating material is called dielectric. So those insulating material which can be A or other materials like paper, mica, and so on, they are called the dielectric materials. The symbols of the, the symbol of a capacitor is shown in the diagram below. So you see the capacitor is made up of two parallel plates. So these two parallel plates represent the parallel plate capacitor. You can see the two parallel plates are separated. They are not touching. They have a gap between them. So that gap is filled with the dielectric material. Okay, if you look at this diagram, the diagram shows different types of capacitors as we have in electronic circuit. So here you have fixed capacitors, we also have variable capacitor. Then in the fixed capacitor they are of different types like this type that are cylindrical in shape are called electrolytic capacitor. While this type that are circular in shape or square or rectangular in shape, they are the paper and mica capacitor. So we also have different types of capacitors. Okay, we are going to discuss that later. So the capacitors are classified usually according to the type of dielectric material used in them. We are coming. Now, dielectric. The insulating material placed between the plates of a capacitor is called the dielectric substance or material. Now, we say placing a solid dielectric between the plates of a capacitor serves three functions. So you need to listen attentively the functions of the dielectric material. Number one, the dielectric material solves the mechanical problem of maintaining two large metal sheets at a very small separation without actual contact. You know here, the two metal plates are 
separated by a small distance. So it is usually very difficult to maintain such distance without contact. But the use of dielectric material has solved such problem. So it enables us to separate them without contact. Okay, that's one of the functions. The number two, using dielectric material increases the maximum possible potential difference between the capacitor blades. You say it increases the maximum possible potential difference between the capacitor plates. Now we see that any insulating material, when subjected to a sufficiently large electric field, experiences a partial ionization. That partial ionization permits conduction through it. So, and that is what we call the dielectric breakdown. So, but when we use dielectric material, it can permit a maximum potential difference without breakdown. Okay, he said that many dielectric material can tolerate strong electric field without breakdown than when it is in air. So if you use the dielectric material, you find out that the maximum potential difference that can produce the, 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 the breakdown will now be what? Increase. And that is what we call the dielectric strength. So you see that the use of dielectric material increases the dielectric strength of any insulator including the capacitor. So we say thus, using a dielectric material allow a capacitor to sustain a high potential difference and so store greater amount of charge and energy. Again, using a dielectric material allows a capacitor to sustain a high potential difference and so store greater amount of charge and energy. So that is the second function of the dielectric material. The number three, the capacitance of a capacitor of a given dimension is greater when there is a dielectric material between the plates than when there is vacuum. So these are the three functions of dielectric materials in a capacitor. Okay, so we now say capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is the charge stored per unit potential difference in either plate of the capacitor. Also, we can also say it is the ratio of charge to the potential difference in either plate of the parallel plate capacitor. So the capacitance of capacitor is denoted by C. C. And it is given by C is equal to Q over V. Where Q is the charge stored. And V is the potential difference applied between the plates. So we have seen that the unit of charge is in column. And that of the potential difference is in volts. So therefore, the unit of capacitance is now in column per volts. Column per volts. So this column per volt is called Farad, F. So we see that one column per volt is equal to one Farad, F. Okay. Now, for practical application, the unit of capacitance is in microfarad mu, nanofarad n, and picofarad d. So if you see the capacitors that are used in electronic circuits, they are usually measured either in microfarad, picofarad, or nanofarad. So that we can also convert it to farad using the submultiples as we know. So we said that one microfarad is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 6 farad. 
Then 1 nanofarad is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 9 farad. And 1 picofarad is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 12 farad. Now, types of capacitors. Capacitors are named according to the types of dielectric materials used in, in it. So, if, whenever you see a dielectric material capacitor, we call it according to the dielectric material that is used in that capacitor. So, examples are, we have a paper capacitor, we have electrolytic capacitors, we have variable capacitors, we have plastic capacitors, we have ceramic capacitors, we have mica capacitor. These are some of the types of capacitors we have. Okay, factors affecting the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. You say capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor depend on it depends on three factors. It depends on three factors. Number one, the distance between the plates. Number two, the common area of the plates. Then number three, the nature of the dielectric material. Okay, we start with the number one distance between the plates. The capacitance of parallel plate capacitor varies inversely with the distance between the plates. Therefore, reducing separation increases the capacitance, but the plates should not be very close to avoid ionization, which may lead to discharge. So what we are saying here is that as we reduce the space, the distance between the plates, the capacitance will increase. But when we increase the distance between them, the capacitance will be reduced. So we say that it cannot be reduced beyond a certain point. Because certain point, it will now avoid what? Ionization. So, and that will lead to discharge. So the capacitor, instead of storing charge, the charge will be leaked away. So now, this particular factor is very, very useful, especially when tuning a radio set. So when tuning a radio, we discover that as you are tuning the, the knob, you vary the distance between the parallel plates. And as you vary the distance between them, the current passing through the circuit will also vary, which can now produce the resonating current and frequency that enable you to receive the channels. Okay, so mathematically we say C is inversely proportional to D. That implies that CD is equal to K, where K is the constant. So that implies that C1D1 is equal to C2D2. And number two, common area of the plate. Here we say the, capacit the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor varies directly with the common area between the plates. Therefore, reducing the effective area leads to reduction in capacitance. So here we are saying that when the common area between the plates is increased, the capacitance is also increased. But when it is reduced, the capacitance will also reduce. This factor also is also applicable when tuning the radio sets also. So we see when you are tuning a radio set, you are varying two things. Number one, you are varying the distance between the plates. You also vary the common area between the plates. So now we say C is directly proportional to A. So that means C is equal to K A, where K is the constant, as we stated before. So that means C1 over A1 is equal to C2 over A2. Then number three, dielectric material between plates. So different dielectric material 
Different dielectric materials produce will produce different capacitance effects. So we say the dielectric strength is the maximum potential gradient or electric field, electric field strength in an insulator that can withstand that an insulator can withstand without breakdown. The maximum potential gradient or electric field strength an insulator can withstand without breakdown. We have stated this before. We say that the dielectric material increases the dielectric strength. So it increases that maximum potential gradient to ensure that the capacitor can withstand a very high electric field without breakdown. So that is the function of dielectric material in the capacitor. Okay, then combining these three factors now, if we combine the three factors, we can now state that the capacitance is directly proportional to the common area of the plate and inversely proportional to the distance between the plates. So it is now given C is proportional to A over D, which implies that C is equal to K, K A over D, where K is the constant of proportionality known as the dielectric constant. So when we now replace it with the dielectric constant, we have that C is equal to epsilon 0 A over D, where epsilon 0 is the dielectric constant. Okay, now arrangement of capacitors. So we see that there are two ways in which capacitors can be arranged. We have the parallel arrangement and series arrangement. Now we start with series combination or series arrangement. So here, when capacitors are connected in series with a battery of EMFV as shown in the diagram below, each of the capacitors acquire the same charge Q. So if you look at, we, also, we should know this, that any series circuit, the charge is always the same, but the potential difference is not the same. So you see the potential difference, the EMF of the battery will now be divided into V1, V2, and V3. Why the charge will remain the same. Okay, so we now say the potential difference across the combination is the sum of potential differences of the individual capacitor. So we now say V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. So we recall from the formula for capacitance, we now say that V is equal to Q over C. So that means Q over C is equal to Q over C1 plus Q over C2 plus Q over C3. So by the time we divide through by Q, since the charge is the same, so we get that 1 over C is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. So that is the effective capacitance for capacitors that are connected in series. Okay, then parallel combination. Now we said that if capacitors are connected in parallel and the combination is connected to a battery, as shown below, the potential difference through each of them will be the same. So the, unlike the series circuit, where the potential difference vary and the charge is the same. Here, the potential difference is the same, but that charge will vary. So, we now say that the total charge across the combination is the sum of all the charges of the individual capacitor. So we say that Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. Remember that Q is equal to CV. So that means CV is equal to C1V plus C2V plus C3V. So since V is the same, throughout the whole combination. So we divide route by V. We now get C is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. So here we now say 
the effective capacitance of a parallel circuit is the sum of the capacitances of the individual capacitor. So, but when it is in series, we say that the effective capacitance is less than the capacitance of a single capacitor. Okay, let us solve examples on this. Example one, we have this circuit. We are told to find the effective capacitance in the circuit shown below. So if you look at the circuit, you will see that 0 0.3 microfarad and 10 microfarad are in series. And that combination are in parallel with 2.5 microfarad. So we now treat the two series combination first. So we now see, so far they are in series, the effective capacitance 1 over C is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. So that means 1 over C is equal to 1 over 0 0.3 plus 1 over 10. So making C the subject of the formula, we have that C is equal to 0 0.3 multiply by 10, all over 10.3, giving us 0 0.29 microfarad. That is the effective capacitance between the 0 0.3 microfarad and 10 microfarad. So now, treating the, two, the effective capacitance with the 2.5 microfarad, they are now in parallel. Therefore, the effective capacitance will be C, is equal to C1 plus C2, which implies that C, C is equal to 0 0.29 plus 2.5, and that will give us 2.75 microfarad. So that is the effective capacitance in the circuit. Okay, example two. Three capacitors of capacitance 1.5 microfarad 2 microfarad and 3 microfarad are connected to 12 volts battery as shown below. Now calculate the question A, the effective capacitance, B, charge on each plate, C, the voltage across 2 microfarad. So you see the circuit diagram as it is given. Now we look at the solution. Now we say the three capacitors are in series. So the effective capacitance, 1 over C is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. And that implies that 1 over C is equal to 1 over 1.5 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. And that implies that C is equal to 6 over 4 plus 3 plus 2. And that will give us 0 0.67 microfarad. And that is the effective capacitance. Now, since the three capacitors are in series, so the charge across all of them are the same. So the total charge, Q, is equal to CV. And we see that C is 0 0.67, which is the same thing as 2 over 3 times 10 to the power minus 6. So multiply by 12. And that will give us 4 times 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb, which is equal to 8 micro coulomb. Number C, the voltage across 2 microfarad. We can denote it by V1. So V1 is equal to Q over C1. And the Q is the charge across each of them, which is... 8 times 10 to the power minus 6 divided by C1, which is 2 times 10 to the power minus 6, then we get 4 volts. Then, example number 3. Three capacitors of capacitance 0 0.1 microfarad, 0 0.2 microfarad, and 0 0.3 microfarad are connected to a 12 volt battery as shown below. Then calculate the question A, effective capacitance, B, the charge on each plate, C, voltage across 0.3 microfarad capacitor. 
okay you see the circuits they are in parallel so the solution a the three capacitors are connected in parallel so the effective capacitance c is equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3 and that implies that c is equal to 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 and that implies that c is equal to 0 0.6 microfarad and that is the effective capacitance now b the charge on each plate you see that they are in parallel so the charge is different so let the charges be q1 q2 and q3 so we say q1 is equal to c1v which is 0 0.1 multiplied by 12 and that will give us 1.2 microcoulomb q2 is equal to c2v which is 0 0.2 multiplied by 12 giving us 2.4 microcoulomb and q3 is equal to c3v which is 0 0.3 multiplied by 12 which is equal to 3.6 microcoulomb so if we want to find the total charge we now add the charge across each so which we are going to get q1 plus q2 plus q3 and that will be 1.2 plus 2.4 plus 3.6 and that will give us 7.2 micro column. then number c the voltage across the combination is given by v is equal to q over c and so far we know that q is the total charge which we get to the 7.2 micro column, which is 7.2 times 10 to the power minus 6 over the c D, that's the capa the capacitor which is the capacitance of uh, 0 0.3 microfarad which is 0 0.3 times 10 to the power minus 6 and that would be equal to 24 volts so 24 volts is the potential difference across the 0 0.3 microfarad capacitor okay in summary say the capacitor is a device used to store electric charge as well as electrical energy we say that a capacitor, a capacitor is made up of a, a two or more parallel plate conductor separated by a distance which is filled with, with an insulating material called the dielectric material now we say that the dielectric material increases the maximum potential difference or the electric field which the insulator can withstand without breakdown therefore the use of dielectric material can increase the dielectric strength of a capacitor we say that it also help us to place two two parallel plate conductor very close without being in contact okay we now say again that the dielectric material enable the capacitor to avoid ionization and discharge due to the what when the gap between them is too close okay then we also say that we have various types of capacitors according to the type of dielectric materials that are used in them example we mentioned the plastic capacitor the ceramics capacitor the mica capacitor the electrolytic capacitor the paper capacitor okay now we also say the capacitor can be arranged in parallel and in series if it is arranged in, arranged in series the capacitance of the, the effective capacitance is less than the capacitance of individual capacitor and in the reciprocal of the effective capacitance is equal to the reciprocal of the sum of the individual capacitance that make up the capacitor we now say when it is arranged in parallel the effective capacitance is the sum of the capacitance of the individual capacitors making up the combination okay now assignments number one 
explain what is meant by the statement the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is 5 microfarad number two state the factors on which the capacitance of a capacitor depend on and mention how each of them varies when tuning a radio set then number three you have to calculate the effective capacitance of the circuit shown below so you solve the assignment and submit it in the google classroom so any question you can forward it to us or to me in the google classroom we will discuss it thank you for listening and god bless you